place you can really start, especially when you're talking to a Welsh rugby legend, and that is you're in the valleys, rugby <laughs> growing up. When was when was the first time you touched the rugby ball? Was it before you could walk? Was it as the second you took your first step mm -hmm. and your dad tried to turn it into a goose step? Or how did <laughs> rugby come about to you? Um, well, I can't do a goosey, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think earliest memory is probably when I was like seven or eight. Um, mm -hmm. But I know my dad probably tried sooner than that to <laughs> get me kicking a rugby ball of some sort. Yeah, he's, he's massive into his rugby as well. So... That's probably something that we share and yeah, obviously it's not all we talk about, but like it's a big part of our lives, especially like mm -hmm. I've moved out now. So like when I go back home, um, we like to stick on a rugby game uh, if if the men are playing. So yeah, it's nice to have have that with him. Oh, I love that. So yeah. when you were, when was the first time you were in a rugby team? Were you one of these situations where there was a girl playing on the young boys team or was there a, luckily was there like a women's team near you at the time or when you were younger uh, i played with uh with the boys so i i remember doing tag rugby um mm -hmm. with the boys um at my at my local in ponte de Lais. and um yeah obviously i grew up with with all of them as well so it was quite easy to just you know they were all of my like my best friends so it was easy to just interlink with them like that and then had to stop playing then when I went to comprehensive school and um mm -hmm. yeah I found it quite hard actually to get to get back into rugby um mm -hmm. but yeah luckily I found a way and yeah here I am <laughs> I was gonna say because I, I remember reading and it was you didn't actually properly commit <laughs> until quite late on for a rugby yeah player. so how was how was that coming so you're at comprehensive school was it just other things got in the way or was it you didn't really want to go down the rugby route you just always saw it as like a bit of fun that you had as like like you said like a talking point with your dad and it was yeah. never something you really pursued or just tell us how your school was when you're trying to if you're trying to navigate rugby or you're just doing other things at that time what was Kira Bevan the human being up to <laughs> um not a lot really um <laughs> like I obviously tried to find like other interests and stuff so I did a lot of like long distance running and stuff um mm -hmm. which has probably helped me rugby wise um but yeah, I think I just probably just done like the PE in sports and just kind of kept ticking over that way, really. And it wasn't until I was 16 then where I, my mum's friend, um, she was like, Kira needs to get back into rugby kind of thing. She was like, I've seen this. She needs to go to it. And you know, when you're so stubborn and adamant, and you're like, nah, I'm not going. <laughs> like, yeah. teenage, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. Um and I obviously went <laughs> um and yeah I've never never looked back since and it kind of went it kind of escalated fairly quickly then from then so yeah like I've never looked back and that was probably in like early 2014 mm -hmm. so I had a massive break from not doing any rugby at all and then kind was of that, how long was that five, five years no rugby really was it not yeah like yeah which is quite like quite a long time I suppose it was all of my comprehensive years really I didn't didn't touch a rugby ball didn't pick it up like didn't want to know really I like, was not interested at all <laughs> it's quite it's quite impressive because that's, that's a year when a lot of your skills kind of function because yeah. when you're when you're like minis rugby you're just kind of running around in a field and you're like you said yeah. like, your mum and dad are just sort of throwing you on a field on a Sunday morning mm. and you don't really know what's going on so yeah 100% so you must have had to learn fast there, but talk about 2014. I've promised Kira's not got a copy of my notes here. This isn't prepped, but I actually had written down the, the 2014 year, because like you said, you came back in 2014 to rugby mm. and you were already, by the end of that that year, you were already sort of in the Wales Sevens contention squad mm. and getting selected for squads. So yeah, we talk we talk about not learning the, the fundamental age for learning the skills. You obviously pick them up pretty quickly. How was that 2014 year for you to going back and then when do like when do you start getting messages from coaches and things like this and you start going, Oh, hold on, why has this guy got Wales coach in his email address when he's emailing me and stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, it was it all happened like fairly quickly. I just did like um Osprey's under eighteens region and stuff, didn't think mm -hmm. anything of anything. Um and then like as the year went on, obviously the, the women's world cup was in France that year as well. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being totally honest, didn't even know that was going on. Um Obviously, social media wise, it wasn't as that big, and I was even playing rugby in Wales, and I didn't have a clue that our national team were competing like mm -hmm. across the English Channel kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and then 
as the year went on, um, I went to Sweden with the under 18 sevens with Wales and Reese Edwards, who was Wales women's head coach at the time, um, he kind of just invited me into the sevens program and I ended up going to, to Dubai to play sevens with Wales and then got selected then in the Six Nations in 2015 and then had my first cap. And then, yeah, I've ever since then, you know, like touch wood, you know, lucky enough to be ever present in, in the Welsh squad. It's a pretty good 12 months for somebody there. So just, <laughs> how did you how did you end up at Ospreys under 18s? Because, I mean, <clears throat> as as talented as I like to <clears throat> believe as big-headed I am, I couldn't just walk up to Edinburgh under 18s and go, yeah, just give me a shot. But, so how, <clears throat> does, how does that come about? Was there, like, um, like almost, like, like war style recruitment for like, mm. you know where Os- Osprey's under eighteen needs you. Can you play rugby? <laughs> Have you ever done sport? Or how did how did that come about? Like you said, I think your mum's friend sort of played yeah, you yeah. at it. So did she just go? I know somebody, or is it a case of this was purely a? Uh, I'm just going to pick this up and try it again. Well, I think it was a, a, like a trial, and obviously she's seen somewhere that the Osprey's under eighteens were trialing, and that mm. it was at this location at this time. And then that's when she was kind of like, Kira needs to go to it. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, ever since then, like never, never looked back really. And I'm lucky enough now that I can call it my full-time job as well, which is, which is really, really good for me. Um, considering, you know, other than that five years, um, rugby was my life and now it is my life and I get to do this full-time, which is, which is brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's the dream. It is the absolute dream. So tell me about that <laughs> first that first trip to Stockholm when you're, cause you're, so you're, are you 18 at this point or are you 17? 17, going, yeah. So 17. 17. Yeah. So what's it like when somebody's sending you on a plane going, so you're representing the country and we're sending mm. you to Sweden. How does, how do those emotions come around when you get those calls and those texts? Um, I don't know. I think as a, as a 17 year old, you're like, oh, just, let's just go. Like, <laughs> Dance see a holiday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like pretty sure Abba are from Sweden as well. So it's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think like, like it, it was a great opportunity and you know if it wasn't for I think Richie Poo was our head coach at the time and um yeah if it wasn't for them guys kind of believing in me I think I was the youngest person there at the time I think everyone else was 18 mm-hmm. um so that for them to take a, a bit of a risk really considering I literally picked it up like a couple of months before um or back up you know it was a pretty big risk and mm-hmm. I just think I'm you know grateful that they seen something in me and yeah, just I just kind of took it in my stride, I think, and obviously done something right, I think. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? Um, I step back a wee bit. How was that first training session back on a rugby pitch then? Because I can imagine that would have that would have felt like an absolute car crash mm-hmm. with that, that first tackle. <laughs> if you've not been tackled in six years, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know when you're younger and you have kind of got like no fear. Yeah, I think that's kind of what, like, what I had and where I was at. I was like, "What's the worst that could happen?" Whereas now, <laughs> now you're like, "Oh my god, if I did that, then like, I'd probably like dislocate my shoulder or something." <laughs> so like, I don't know. The fear factor was quite slim um, back then, whereas now it's right up here. <laughs> <laughs> now you're looking at it and you're like, "Run!" Yeah. You're like stretching the hamstrings. Like you're, this, but... you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you for listening to this clips episode on YouTube. And then if you want to hear the whole podcast, you can find them on Apple or Spotify, as well as the full video version on this YouTube channel, alongside all the other great content we produce on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope to see you again on another clips episode or in the full episode podcast. Tweet us, tag us, let us know what you thought. All the links are down in the description. It means the world that you guys come and support us. So thank you very much.